Hello there, it's Wednesday the 24th of April 2013. Welcome to today's United Kingdom Talk. My name, just in case you didn't know, is Chris Reardon. Hope you're well. In desperate need of a haircut, incidentally. Oh my God, my hair is now at least half a centimetre long. It's terrible. And as I've said before, if you're a little bit going a bit bald at the back there, you know... <laughs> The longer it is, the worse it looks. As my lovely niece Tracy keeps insisting on, oh, she's so nice. There's so so something something very nice about having honest nephews and nieces. They are only too willing to point out if there's anything wrong with you, as I'm sure you well know. Oh yeah, she was. A, she said to me, "You mustn't tilt your head forward when you're doing the show, because the bald bit shows up." Thank you very much, Tracy. I do appreciate. I really do appreciate that. And, and the other thing is, of course, uh, she's got one of those smart TVs. Oh yes, oh yes. All the mod cons at her house, dear. A smart TV which has an integral little webcam at the top, and we can do Skype to Skype phone uh, 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 video calls, which I love. And I, I ring her up sometimes on the Skype. <coughs> Although we had a bit. of trouble with her. I couldn't see her for some reason. So eventually what we did on the Skype is uh, I got her to delete me and then I re-added her and then we could see each other again. Skype. If you haven't got Skype, you must get Skype. Wonderful. If you've got the internet and a broadband connection and you've got Skype, then you can do free phone, free, free uh, Skype to Skype calls or very cheap um, Skype to phone calls. Wonderful little thing. Anyway, so we do these, and she's got the video at her end, and she's usually on the settee with the baby in arms, feeding it or something like that, or the baby's on the floor, and we have video-to-video -video conversations. And while they're there, as always, as always, she will point out any faults that she sees, as, as, as indeed does my nephew Jimmy. But not my other nephew, Gary. He must be the one that loves me more. Therefore, he will get a larger Christmas present. And that's it. It really is. <laughs> I know. You're so, oh, you should have given them all the same amount. Of course I give them all the same amount. I'm very careful like that, actually, to make sure that <coughs> the value <coughs> of... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> the value of gifts to all my nieces and nephews is, is roughly the same every year. I think that's very important. Anyway, so must have my hair cut. Very, very long. Although I won't have time today because uh, my best friend Ron is coming over and we're going to the garden centre, boys. We love the... I love garden centres and so does he. I could spend hours just walking around a garden centre, you know, touching leaves and perhaps if there's a little bit of a rosemary or something like that, I, I get my hand and I go up, up the lavender like that. And I go, oh, the most lovely smell. Do you like the smell of herbs and things like that? What, I think they call them, in, in America, they call them herbs, herbs. We call them herbs, with a H. Herbs. Herbs, 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 herbs. herbs. I love the smell of all that stuff. But both of us, fortunately, uh, do like going to a garden centre. And um, the last time we went, we went to a place, I wrote it down here somewhere, uh, called the Mulans. V-E-R-M-E-U. L-E-N-S. I think that's the right spelling. The Mulans Garden Centre in Staines. And uh, the reason I went there, or we went there, is because I heard my friend uh, Steve Allen from LBC talking about it, and he said he went down there. Because uh, a, a, a couple of shows before he did that particular one, he was saying that he wanted to do his hanging baskets, and this year he's decided to do them all in fuchsias, which I thought that was a good idea. So I thought, well, I'll do some. I won't do them all in fuchsias. I'll do some as well. But he was saying he went to one garden centre and the fuchsia plants were £2.20 each. And he needed about 40 of them because he put so many in. Hang I mean, I, I thought to myself, he must have very big hanging baskets if he's getting through 40. I mean, you never put six of those in a basket, would you? I've got a, just, just a normal size hanging basket <coughs> and I would put six around it and something in the middle. Usually, if I'm doing a hanging basket, it'd be six of the same around the outside and something different in the middle. I think he's doing just completely all, all fuchsias. And he was saying there were £2.20 a, a plant. Well, you've only got to add up that £2.20 times 40. Well, that's like nearly eight, listen, nearly 90 quid, isn't it? £90. That's a lot of money. £90, 100 and. 
$60 for Fuang in Barsis, which, you know, let's be honest about that, only last a few months, you know, they're only up there, well, you put them up now, I mean, you can take a risk and put them up now, but you must bring them in when the frost comes, otherwise you lose them, you know, you've got to keep an eye on the weather, <clears throat> If there's any chance of frosting and you've got plants or hanging baskets or plants in the garden, you've got to cover them or bring them in for the night because they don't like the cold. How would you like it if you was a plant stuck outside, dear? Stuck outside. And the frost came. You'd be dead. Dead, dear. Dead. Well, the same thing's going to happen to the plants. They will die if you don't cover them or bring them in. So you must bring them in. And uh, so, I mean, you can do them now. And so if if you're lucky with the weather, you put them back outside, you know, during the daytime. So you've got, uh, what, I mean, uh, April, May, June, July, August, September. So they're only up there for about six or seven months. And to be honest, by September, they start, you know, they start, look, oh, look at those now. You know, they've nearly had it now. And some people bring them in straight away. I keep them going until the very last flowers disappear. <clears throat> You know, I don't, I'm not one of these people that chucks them away. Oh, it looks a bit iffy now. I'll chuck it away now. I'll keep them going as long as I possibly can. Anyway, so he was saying this, and then someone rang in and suggested to him the Moulins Garden Centre in Staines. Uh, so, uh, and he said, the plants there are 89 pence each. Now, these are not plug plants. These are sort of, you know, small... Pl oh, what's that noise? That noise. Uh, these, are very, these are small, proper plants in little pots. You can also get plug plants, not with fuchsias, lots of other different things. But I, I've, I've had very, very limited success with plug plants. I don't know why. Um, I, I, I mean, I've, I order them online usually, Sutton Seeds or something like that. And they come, these tiny little things, excuse me, Tiny little things. Oh, I'm coughing here. I've got a little button here uh, that, so, so that if I cough, you can't hear it. Well, right, I'll do it again. See, you couldn't hear that, could you? You couldn't hear, even hear the click of the button. Oh, it's all wonderful technical stuff here because I'm actually recording back on the big microphone. I don't know if you've seen it. You see? Big microphone, OK? I'm recording my vocal on the big microphone now because, quite frankly, I think it sounds better. The little one is very good that I used to clip to my shirt and I still use that outside. But um, I, I think for inside, if I'm inside, then I might as well use the big one. I mean, it's sitting here doing nothing. Um, where was I now? Oh, yes, the plug plants... They, they come, and I ordered them from Sutton Scenes several times, different ones, you know. Uh, I think I, my, what were those, pansies and uh, winter something or other. What are those things that come in the winter and they stay all, all the time? Can't remember. Anyway, so I bought lots of these little plugs before, about three different lots <coughs> and three different types of plants over the course of a couple of years. And they, they just don't seem to grow for me. You know, I put them in, in the basket, put them up, and, and they just, I mean, they don't die. They, just, they remain green, but they just don't seem to grow. So I'm not going to bother with plug plants anymore. Um, I don't know if you've had any experience with plug plants or anything like that. Anyone ordered those? And they come, they come I, I suppose, you know, I, I often wonder why put them, if putting them in a, in a cardboard box is, is stunting the growth at all, and it comes through the post, you know. So I don't know. You order them from Sutton's, these little box arrives, you open it up, and there are like ty ten very small plants in like little plastic things. And you, the idea is you plant them out and they grow, but they just don't seem to grow for me for some reason. <clears throat> so I've gone back to going to plants. I only now buy this stuff from Garden Centre. And actually, it, it seems to be cheap as well, but I'll come on to that. Um, so... They said, I think they were 89 pence each or 99 pence each. And if you buy 10, then they're 10 pence less, which is 89 or 79. Actually, I think they might have been 99 pence each. So we bought, I bought 40. Sorry, I bought 20 and Ronnie bought 20. So we got those for 89 pence each, <clears throat> which was, uh, well, 89 times 20, which uh, is not too bad. It's not even 20 quid, is it? So I bought 20, he bought 20. He had to, he had to have all his, he's doing the same as me, fuchsias, fuchsias. He's doing his baskets, all fuchsias, or oh, he's done them already actually now. 
and he has to have them all the same, all the same sort of fuchsia all round. Whereas me, I like to do different ones, you know, so you've got a different, a different selection in the same basket. Uh, and whereas he didn't put anything in the middle, I bought some... Oh, what's going on here, Joe? Oh, people trying to sell you stuff all the time by text messages. It's most annoying. Um, yes, and in the middle, I bought white... Uh, geraniums. Now, Ronnie doesn't like geraniums. I don't think he likes the smell, because they, they have got a, a bit of a pungent smell to them, haven't they, geraniums, don't you think? Not keen on the smell if you touch the leaves or anything like that. I think they're all right. I quite like them. So I bought white geraniums for the middle of the hanging baskets, and round the outside is um, different coloured fuchsia. So when they start flowering, I'll show you a couple of pictures of those. So we got those in there. And of course, uh, uh, as I say, we went down there uh, on, the, on, the, on the advice of uh, Steve Allen from LBC. So I bought those and then I had a look around and I saw some potatoes, you know, potato seeds, the little, little tiny little potatoes. And I thought, oh, shall I try these again? Because I, I've tried them three times now and no success at all. I don't know why. Um, I think the problem is in that part of the garden, I, I've got a bit of a problem with not mould. What's the word? Oh, God, I forgot the word now. Um, blight. That's it. I got a problem with blight. In that in, in in a certain area of the garden, and I read somewhere you're not supposed to, if you get blight in the garden, whatever position, do not plant the types of plants that are affected by blight in that part of the garden for a number of years. Right? I've read this somewhere, <clears throat> and on these three occasions, the potatoes were planted in the same place, and the plants sort of grew and then they died. But the 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 look of the plant when they died was not dissimilar to the look on the tomato plants when they got blight. So I'm wondering if it's the same thing that's affecting both these plants. So this year I've decided to grow. I've already got my tomato seeds are in. They've all sprouted. OK, so they're on the way now. They're in this little cold um, plastic thing that I bought last year, very cheap for about 20 quid from Tesco's home and where. So I've put them in there and they're all growing now, uh, slow. The little seedlings are up, little, the first lot of leaves are out there. I've also got in there uh, runner bean seeds. Okay, so they're in, they haven't sprouted yet. And I've put peas in the, um, in the little little bit in the garden, what do you call it, a little growing patch that I've got in the garden. They're in the ground waiting to come up. There are also onions in there. I put some new ones in last week that I bought from Vermoulins. Uh, is it Vermo Vermoulins? Yeah, Vermoulins. And there's some, also some onions in there that I put in in October last year, which are overwintering, and they, are, they seem to be doing quite well. And they're for pulling June, July sort of time. So they're coming on all right there. Uh, but the tomatoes, when they've started growing and they're ready to be transplanted into their big pots, I don't know if I've got pots or growing bags this year. Sometimes I do grow bags, sometimes pots. The only thing is that they're growing bags. <clears throat> I find that often you don't put the stick in far enough. You know the stick to hold the tomato up? And it falls over. So I might just do them in, in the big black pots. So I've got those. Um, I'm going to do them out the front of the house. Which is a bit risky, because someone might nick them, you know. While I'm at work, you get some tow rag come along and nick my tomatoes, dear. I shan't be very pleased if that happens. I really won't. So I'm going to do them out the front when they've grown enough, you know, from the two leaves, next leaves, next leaf, and then in the pot, and then there, and then that's where they will stay until they harvest and uh, uh, finish. Um, <clears throat> so while I was in Vermoulins, I saw these great big pots. So I bought a couple of big pots, which were, were not bad at all, £15 each. Which, again, I thought was a very reasonable price uh, in comparison to some big pots I've bought before in the garden centre, which is just down the road from me, called Long Acres. Long Acres, which was, was a wonderful garden centre, right? Now, they bloody started selling everything. There's food in there, there's clothes, there's Wellington boots... And I think they've lost the plot a bit. It's, it's got too big. You understand what I mean? It's got too big. Where the Mulans is clearly, I mean, it's obviously a family-run business there. 
as just members of the family and perhaps a, a couple of other staff, which I found very helpful. I was in there, you know, asking, asking about the potatoes and I said I had limited success and she said, well, what are you doing? So I told her, she said, well, it sounds like you're doing everything right. I don't know why you're having the problem. So I bought a couple of these great big, um, uh, I actually bought four of them, great big black pots. They're going to go out the front with the tomatoes and we'll see how we get on there. I'm going to give it one more go. Right. I, 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 I don't understand because it should be fairly easy to grow potatoes. You get your big pot, you put three of them, three or four, of them, maybe four of them uh, near the bottom of the pot, not not right at the bottom. So you've got a little layer of earth and then they grow and you put more earth on then then they grow, you put more earth on, then they grow, you put more earth on, then then they grow. Right. <clears throat> and I bought earlies. So you put the earlies in, and when they flower, you're ready to lift them then. And that was what's been happening before is that they've flowered and died. And then I've gone for the potatoes, and there's been barely anything in there, you know. A small handful of tomato uh, potatoes, which actually were very tasty. They were just so small, and there wasn't many of them. And I don't understand why that's happening. So, as well as that... I have bought Miracle Grow Earth. Now, this is earth that's already got fertilizer in it, so you don't have to add anything. And I'm hoping that this will this will cure the problem, uh, or, 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 or at last I'll be able to grow potatoes again. Because it, 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 I say again, you know, grow potatoes for the first time properly because it just hasn't worked before, and it's it's a, it's a real disappointment when you spend. You know, all that time, and then you go down and do some weeding and take the weeds out and whatever. When you spend all that time doing that, and then months go by, and you see the flowers, and you think, oh, right, okay, they've got to die, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting for weeks, for weeks. Eventually they die, and then you go for the potatoes, and there's nothing there. <laughs> and you end up going up to the supermarket to buy another packet. Um, oh, is that you, Cat? Katie? Come on, darling. Katie. Come solo. Katie. One minute. I'll try and get her to come in. Coming in, Katie. Katie. Come and solo, darling. Oh, just a minute. Let me see if I can get her. Katie. Come and say hello. She's got a bit fat, the cat. She's got quite fat. But she's very loving. We're very close. Katie. One second. I'll try and get her. Where are you, darling? Can you come say hello? Come on, darling. All right, up we get. Here we are, darling. Come say hello, that's it. Here she is. Katie the cat is here. Hello, Katie. Oh, oh, you're a bit low there, aren't you? Hey, what are you moaning for? What are you meowing for? Actually, I know why she's meowing. I'm recording this programme in the morning. And um, what it is, in the morning when I've got up, I, I pull back the covers on my bed and open all the windows. You know, it's the first thing I do in the morning. Sunny, uh, cold, doesn't matter. That's what I always do. Now, when I do that, I have to chuck the cat out of the room because she sleeps next to me. So when I get up, she generally gets up. She goes downstairs, had something to eat, comes in the living room, comes and sits on my lap while I'm watching a bit of telly and having breakfast. And then uh, she goes back upstairs. Now, of course, when she goes back upstairs, the bedroom doors close because all the covers are pulled back, you know. And um, so she starts meowing until, oh, it's, that's gone all blurry, isn't it? All right, you're getting down now, darling. Yeah. There you are, darling. All right. So yeah, that's, that's better. Um, <clears throat> and she, she starts meowing because she can't get back in the room. Well, she will be able to get back in the room eventually when I reopen the door and pull the covers back. But I like to air the bed. You know, anyway, back to the story of the potatoes and all that. So I'm hoping that this year that's going to work. So we've got the new big pots. We've got new Miracle Grow Earth with fertilizer. We've got these seed potatoes. And also, on the advice of someone who comes, uh, two lovely girls who come to um, a place I work at in Ealing, West Five on Fridays, they said, don't waste your money with seed potatoes. All you need is a couple of potatoes from the supermarket that have started sprouting. So I, I, I've got a couple of those. I've got three potatoes from the supermarket. I think they were called, um, it's, it's like a, like a royal name, something royal, like a queen or, 
or princess, something like that, you know. So I've got a, three of those that were sprouting, so I've got those as well. I also bought some seed potatoes from the garden centre, much cheaper than what they were charging on the uh, May Lauder line, Sutton Seeds. You know, because I used to buy all this stuff from Sutton Seeds, uh, uh, potatoes and seeds and things like that. Now I'm buying it from this Vermeulen's place. It was it was all much cheaper. The pots were cheaper. The big pots were much cheaper. Everything seems to be cheaper there than it is buying it online. And, of course, you don't have the postage charge. OK, you've got the fuel going there and back. But it's like a day out anyway, isn't it? You know, so it's quite nice. So I've got those. So I've put them in the windowsill to sprout a bit more, along with the seed potatoes that I got from uh, Vermeulen's. They're on the windowsill. You know, you've got to wait for them. Chitting, it's called. Chitting, which is basically sprouting. And then when, they've, when you think they've sprouted, and I'm not quite sure how much sprout you want off them, but when you've, when you've got sprout enough, then you carefully put them in there, try not to break the little things off that have grown, and, uh, and, and, and off you go. So fingers crossed with that and the tomatoes, and maybe putting them out the front there, um, uh, I will have to, uh, uh, it, it will be a lot better then, because it has been quite warm. Oh, we would have had a wonderful weekend. It's been really nice weather. At last, the cold wind has stopped, and it went on for months, didn't it? Eh? That cold wind went on for months and months. So there we are, for Mewlands Garden Centre. Lots of money saved at, at Staines. If you're uh, anywhere around that area, I suggest that you go and look. And the other thing is, it's very, very close to Heathrow Airport. And the planes take off, sometimes, right over the garden centre in the car park. And you're quite, and you look at, ah, shh, and this plane goes over the door, ah, roaring away as it goes over top. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I do love the planes going across. What do you want? Oh, no. She's not going to shut up. Hang on a minute. I'm going to have to let her in the bedroom. All right, darling. Hang on. Hang on. I've opened it now. Come on. Hang on. Door open, darling. You can go in there now if you want to. Oh, she's, she won't she won't meow now. She could she just well, she wants to get on the bed, see, that's what it is. That's her bed now. As well as mine. We share a bed, me and my cat. Yes, so um the planes go directly overhead, so I might actually take down my camera as well today. Uh, I think he's picking me up about twelve o'clock. What is it now? It's half past ten. So he's picking me up about twelve o'clock and we're going down to garden centre. I might take my camera there and see if we can get some, some videos of the planes as they go on over. I, I want to be underneath an A three eighty when it when it takes off. I haven't I haven't experienced that yet. I've experienced small planes, not a jumbo jet, seven seven sevens, Boeings, but not an not an not a uh, not a A380. What is it? Aero, Aero, Aerobus, Airbus, Airbus. It's not not an Airbus A380 yet. That's what I want to be underneath when it takes off because they are just enormous. They are enormous. These things. They really are. Um, so that's that. Ordered uh, myself a new jumper because now is the time, boys and girls, to get next year's winter and autumn wear. Okay. Get down the shops now and get yourselves these get yourselves these things while they go on sale. Because all the shops are now trying to get rid of this stuff, getting ready for the summer stuff, you see. And um, yeah, I want to get another thick jumper, not woolen, incidentally, because I seem to be allergic to wool. So I shall get a, a mainly... It can have a little bit of wool in it, but not too much. Mainly acrylic. So I want to get one of those jumpers. And I've ordered one. Of course, you will be the first people to see it on this programme, boys and girls. United Kingdom Talk. OK? It might... I don't know. It's Wednesday uh, today. It might even be here for Friday's live show. OK? Friday's live show. Don't you know about my live shows? Oh, yes! Yes. So Saturday's re show... OK, we now record on Friday morning and you can join in and watch as well. And it is rather marvellous to talk to you on the telephone or over Skype live, so to speak. So if you want to join us for that and uh, we've recently made the switch from Ustream to YouTube live. OK, it's very, very easy to find us. Uh, I say that, I'm going to have to bring it up online because I can't remember how to find it now. Uh, there we are. If if you go to my... One minute now. Let's try this. You... Is it... Does, there, is that it? Yeah, that's it. And I think... One minute, one minute, one minute. Let's set... What do I do there? There we are. Is that it? 
Yes, lovely. Okay, if you go to my YouTube channel, I shall give you the information out, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Chris Reardon UK forward slash feed. All right? Once again, it's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Chris Reardon UK forward slash feed. That is where the live show appears on Friday mornings at 10.30 UK time. And at the moment here in the UK, we are on BST, British Summer Time, every Friday at 10.30. Show lasts about an hour and a quarter, hour and a half. And it's all live, and you can join in by phone. And it's wonderful. We've been speaking to a few people. Marge, we spoke, we spoke to uh, Wendy, we spoke to Cyber John, we spoke to Millie. And it would be wonderful for you to join in on Friday mornings at 10.30. And then, I, you see, I then record that show, and that becomes Saturday's show. Do you, you get it? So that, that's going very well. And I think the two, the fact that one is live and one is recorded, that works very well for me. I don't know about you. I think, I think you'll agree as well, because on the recorded show, we get to do all the emails, any of the emails that have come in. And on a live show, obviously, people will call in and uh, you can talk to them. So do try and join us uh, every Friday. Uh, anything else to tell you? Oh, just one other thing. Uh, I'm going to see the, uh, going to the hospital on uh, Wednesday to see what's wrong with my feet. Because the sides of my feet, so you know where you've got your little toe, okay? Then you go down a bit further. Not as far as the arch. So the bit between the bottom of the middle little toe and the arch is painful when I'm walking. It's, it's, it's not, I can feel the problem now, OK, but it's not too bad. And today it's only on the right foot. I keep getting pains there, uh, mainly when I'm standing up for a long time. I also get, get it here on my, on my um, elbow and also above my ear. There's a very, very tender area behind my ear. And I, it's, all, it's everywhere where there's like a bit of soft stuff. So we're going down the... Uh, uh, Ronnie's taking us down the hospital to, to, see, uh, to see what's going on there. It might be, might be something to do with the, um, with the drugs trial I'm doing. I don't know. Uh, right. That's it then. Oh, I was also going to tell you that Vermeulen's very, very heart helpful staff there. Really helpful staff. Like this woman, she, she couldn't spend enough time with us, to be honest, when I was asking her about my potato problem and we, we asked her about another couple of things. And then when we got to the till, we had these four big bags of... Well, I had... I, did Ronnie have any as well? No, I think I just bought the bags. I had one, two... No, I had six bags of this miracle Grow Earth. And he, the bloke there actually bought them... He said, I'll take those to the car for you. And he got the trolley out and, um, and, and took them to the car. How nice is that? You know, that's what you call customer service. And that is what brings people back to a shop. You know, there's many shops could take a leaf out of that book. They really could. Doesn't cost an awful lot to have good customer service. And it does bring people back there, doesn't it? All right, my email address, if you want to join in at any time, is Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk oh, also uh, if you forget where that live show is very easy to find it if you just go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk which is the main website for the show you'll find a link to it right at the, at the very top okay all righty Hello to Wendy, who says, just finished watching last Wednesday's show, Chris. Absolutely marvellous. Really enjoyed it. Going to watch it again tomorrow. Are you watching my show several times, Wendy? Is that wise, dear? Is that wise? <laughs> Think you must have the window open. I could hear the birds singing after about 44 minutes. Wonderful to hear. Thank you once again. And that's from Wendy. Oh, I haven't got the window open today. Just, let's just open it and see if there's any birds singing today. One moment, please. Oh, yes, they are. Listen carefully. Birds are singing. Hang on a minute. What have I done there? There we are. Can you hear? Hang on a minute. Let me, sh let me shut up and sit down. Listen. Very, very quietly. 
We have quiet birds today. Sometimes we have loud birds. Sometimes we have quiet birds, Wendy. Wendy, I don't know um, if you've ever seen any of the older uh, shows that I've done from the garden. When we're in the garden, um, you do hear the birds quite loudly. And it's very, very pleasant. Um, we are talking about maths. Um, and I gave you some questions uh, last week, I think it was, the week before last, maybe. And, uh, Wendy says, I found every one of those maths questions. <laughs> She says, when I was at school back in 1984, was it really that long ago? I'm afraid so. But it was later than what I was at school. We didn't have GCSEs. No, neither did we. We had CSE, O-level or A-level. Yep, same here, same here. Bet you did too. Yes, we certainly did. We had options in those days. You might remember that. We had the options of maths or arithmetic and statistics. I was advised to take arithmetic and statistics, as it was supposed to be easier. I still only got CSE Grade 4, which was a, wasn't a fail, but still low at the easier option. My strengths were science and English, but definitely not maths. Algebra gave me nightmares. Oh, come on, Wendy. I mean, what on earth is algebra for? Uh, is, is there anyone... Is there anyone listening or watching this programme now who has ever used algebra? What a bloody waste of time that was. A squared equals A over X. What a load of old bollocks that was, weren't it, eh? I mean, it really was. What a complete and utter waste of time algebra was. Of course, there will be people watching this or listening to this now who will say, Oh, yes, but what if you wanted to become a pilot? Or what if you wanted to become a... I don't know what... I mean, who uses algebra? What if you wanted to become a scientist? Well, how many people in that class of 30 wanted to be a pilot or a bloody scientist? One? Two? So we all had to go through that for the benefit of those two. Uh, just a damn waste of time. An absolute waste of time. I have never used algebra in any part of my life, and I'm 50 now. Bloody waste of time. And you, just like me, I got nightmares as well. Wendy, I've got to tell you, I got an E, O-level E in maths, which is a fail. OK? It's a fail. But let me tell you, I do not make a mistake with money. When I do my quiz night, OK, and it comes to adding up the scores, it's done in my head. Admittedly, also on my fingers, under the table, so no one can see me counting. But I can count... <clears throat> I can subtract. I can multiply to a point. Sometimes I need the calculator. I can divide to a point. You know, if you said to me, what's half of ten? I'll say to you, five straight away. What's half of fifteen? It's seven and a half. What's half of 22.37? Don't know. I could probably work it out. But I can't do long division and... What's that multiplication? Can't remember that is. You know, it's like 257 times and then underneath it you write 26 and then a line and you work that out. Can't do that. But I, I certainly, but it's never really held me back from anything. All this, all this extra maths and all that trigonometry old crap here. You know, I mean, at school, why don't they teach you, te teach the adding, the subtracting, teach a bit about money, this, that, that, but you don't need trigonometry and all that. If you want to become a pilot, or whatever uses trigonometry, learn it when you've said you want to become a pilot. Not while you're at school, with everyone else, wasting time learning these things. Wendy says, you seem to be very shrewd when it comes to money. Yes, I am. Wish I was more like you. I am very shrewd. I, 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 can, I can spot where money can be saved very, very easily. You know. I mean, for example, my, my, my sister, that they have an enormous electricity and gas bill. Enormous. I can walk, and they, they said, oh, well, we don't know why it's so high. We can't understand why it's so high. I can walk around that house and point it out, but I don't. Sometimes I mention to my sister, why are there, like, five lights on in the room? And she will say, oh, yeah, but they're energy-saving bulbs. Yes, but why have you got five of them on? It, they may be energy-saving, but they're still using electricity. See? 
I could walk round that house and probably save a third on the electricity bill. They've also got um, uh, uh, her uh, husband's mother lives there as well. And she has this this electric fire on, which is actually on virtually from the moment she gets up till she goes to bed in winter and summer as well. And I think that's the biggest problem they've got in there, the electric fire. And it's got a certain number of bars, I think. And I, 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 I would say to that one, you know, have a look at the rating of the fire. I think it's, it's got to be about a kilowatt, this fire. You know, chuck it away and get one that's half the power. I bet she wouldn't even notice. You know, go to, go, go to 500 watts or even less. Maybe a 300 watt fire that would do the same job as the one kilowatt one. Because a lot of the heat is wasted. See, they've got this big house and all the, the, there's a stairway. And a lot of the heat goes up there. What they've got to do <clears throat> is put a door there. You need to put a door there and stop the heat escaping. It's a very big house to heat. That's one of the reasons that the electric and gas bill was so high. You know, I, I could walk around that house, I reckon, and save a third of their electricity. In this house, in where I live, I, I don't waste anything. Lights go out. As soon as I finish this show... First thing I do, the three lights that are lighting me up, there's about 150 watts, they're only small lights, okay, they go out straight away. So literally, as I hit the stop button, I'll turn those lights off straight away. I don't waste water, that's on a meter. Nothing is wasted. Really, really shrewd with, uh, with that sort of thing. Wendy says, I know, I bet most of the kids who serve on the teals can't do what you do and add things up in their head. Yes, I can do it as long as I can remember what I'm adding up. <laughs> do, you, do you forget halfway through, Wendy? Memory of a gnat at times. However, they are much smarter than I was in some things at their age. Talking of young folk at the tills, I don't know about you, but I like to shop and chat to people when I grow out, go out for groceries. Yes, I do. I often sort of strike up conversations with people for no reason at all. Ronnie doesn't understand. He said, why are you talking to them? Well, I just do. I just talk to people. In the store, in the queue, at the tills, don't care who. Anyway, was chatting with this young lass who was serving me at the till. She must have been about 20-ish years old. The girl was telling me that the previous people she served were two women and they got into an argument about Margaret Thatcher. Poor lass. I felt so sorry for her. She said she felt so awkward she didn't know where to put herself. It got that bad, apparently, she thought she was going to have to call for security. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Well, that's, that's the whole Margaret Thatcher thing, though, you see. Um, and we saw this just before her funeral. People very, very divisive indeed, you know. I was pro-Thatcher. I liked her very much. But I, a lot of my friends, um, or... Not so much friends, acquaintances. I, I have very few friends. I have a lot of acquaintances. A lot of my acquaintances um, were against her. And big rows would, 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 would start. Real rows. Very, very strong opinions either one way or the other. Not many people in the middle at all. You were either one way or the other with uh, Margaret Thatcher. Thank you, Wendy. And it's nice of you to join out. We, we sang happy birthday to you, didn't we, on Friday? Because it was Wendy's birthday on Friday. Oh, bless. Bless. Did you get nice presents? You got lots of Barry Manilow presents because he's a big Barry Manilow fan. Did you get a cake? Did you get a cake, Wendy? I did this 70th birthday on Saturday, and they had the most wonderful, wonderful birthday cake, which was uh, it was all ice. It was like a, a piece of cheese. looked like a piece of cheese with a bit cut out and mice on the top pretending to eat the cake. From a place in Wimbledon, apparently, because it's Ronnie's birthday next week, so I'm, I'm going to... He, he doesn't watch this anyway, so I'm going to get him a cake. And so I said to him, how much was that cake? 150 quid. Oh, 150 quid? Jesus, I'm not spending that on that wanker. Dear me. 150 quid on a cake? Dear me. But it looked really nice. Oh, maybe I should. Because he wouldn't appreciate... I don't think he'd appreciate a £150 cake, really. He won't eat it, because he's always going to... Makes me laugh, he does. He's as bad as me with his weight, because I'm always going all about my weight, which, incidentally, is still increasing. It's, it's 13 stone two now. Right? If I go jogging, because I've been jogging a while now, I'm now built up to 20 minutes, non-stop. That's not bad, is it? In three weeks. 
I don't want to build up any more than half an hour. 20 minutes I'm okay with, and I've got a little route that I do, which goes in the forest, round and back home again. 20 minutes is good. I can now do that non-stop. Now, if I go jogging, I lose immediately about two and a half pounds. Because it's all water, I suppose, isn't it? And then by the end of the day, it's back to 13 stone two again. I'm just not losing the weight. I'm going to mention this to the doctor as well, I think, on, 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 on Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> hello to James. James says, Hi, Chris. I saw your YouTube test broadcast by accident the other day. And was this, was this to check for adverts? I never saw any at all when I saw your broadcast. Hope it all goes well with finding a suitable place to broadcast live. Yes, this is all to do with adverts. Um, the Ustream system that we were using, which was fantastic, great picture quality, great sound, but unfortunately, it chucks adverts in. Okay, when I say adverts, I don't mean a little bit, a little banner appears at the top bottom of the screen or something like that. The program literally cuts from me, goes to a full screen advert, and then starts again. Now, the bit where the adverts are on, it doesn't cut it and pause it and then pick it up from there. You miss that part of the show. And it's, it's annoying to the viewer. It's also annoying to me because I don't know when this is happening. OK, it wouldn't be so bad if at this end on the screen, um, you know, you had a little countdown or something. Ads coming up in 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six. And then it would get to naught. And then, you know, you, it, it then counts down. I don't know, a minute, two minutes of adverts. And you sit there watching the screen to, to 159, 158. And you could just sit there and take a break. It doesn't do that. It just cuts it, restarts it. And I don't know that it's happened the people obviously watching know that it's happened and they miss the bit where I was talking in between. So that was the problem there. The Ustream Live thing doesn't show ads, or at least it doesn't yet. You know, whether they will or not, I don't know. I think they might put a little banner at the bottom, but that's OK because the show carries on, doesn't it? The problem with the Ustream one was that you would miss bits of the show. So that's why we're trying to use YouTube and that's working. And we're now using that now. James says, The X Factor, I stopped watching it when Susan Boyle came on. I can't remember what of one, one of Simon Cowell's shows she was on, but that's when I stopped watching both his shows, as I thought it was becoming trashy with all the scandals, and I thought the judges were making poor performances too. I thought they could have treated contestants like Susan Boyle a lot better. The voice, uh, is the voice a lot better? If so, I will have a look at that. Yes, it is. The voice... They do seem to care about the person who is auditioning. They're not vile to them like they are on, on, on the X Factor when they start throwing their eyes up in the air and, and just making vile comments. I, I just don't like the way that's done. The X Factor, they don't do that. Uh, sorry, the voice, they don't do that. They give them constructive criticism like, for example, uh, we like your voice, but you're not quite ready yet. Come back next year. That sort of thing, you know. Self-service scanner tools here. Um, there seems to be a lot of problems here. It takes lots of times if you have age-restricted items, as you need a cashier to verify age. And a couple of times the machine has run out of money and hasn't given change. Oh, well, I haven't had that problem, not, not giving change. But uh, and I don't really, I don't buy, see, I don't drink, I never buy alcohol, so I, I don't have the problem with the, uh, the age restriction there. James says, the internet as we know it today was invented by Tim Berners-Lee, a British man, uh, in 1991. The internet started taking off about 10 years ago, but at its height of popularity was about five years ago. I think I've seen the plans for 4G mobile, and I think they're a lot more expensive. Yes, 4G mobile telephones. Um, I've got an iPhone 5, which is 4G capable. But if you want the 4G, you've, you've, you've got to um, pay an extra £5 five pounds a month and I, I think it's i don't, just don't think it's worth it you know the 3g is it's all right you know it's fast enough for what i do so why pay the extra i don't remember this happening when 3g started off what the extra price no i don't think it did it went it went from whatever it was to 3g and there was no price increase they're trying to make more money out of us I think what is good about 4G when these technologies start off, there's teething troubles. And there is with 4G in the UK as it operates on the supposed upper part of the TV band that is now not used when the analogue was switched off. 
But 4G interferes with few, some free view boxes and sets here in the UK. It seems to be causing a little bit of a headache as the mobile companies have been frantically trying to stop the interference. I will check if all the emails have been read, but I think they have from that, James, yes. Yeah, they're saying it might cause a problem with free view boxes. And then I think you have to have some sort of filter or something like that on your aerial. Oh, it's, a, it's so many wireless waves everywhere. There really is, dear. I can feel them permeating through my body. I really can. Um, <clears throat> where are we going now? Oh, Marge has been watching one of my old shows. She's been looking at the one Thursday the 4th of December. She says, I love your hair in this old video. Do you know what, Marge? 2008... I thought I'd only been doing the video side of things for about two years. It's actually 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's five years I've been doing these videos. It's like a little, little personal diary, really, when I go back and wish that I looked the same. You know, but now there's lines and there's fatness. Oh, Marge. Oh, dear. Marge sends this wonderful email in and says, uh, just wanted to say how fun it was to speak with you live in your on in your YouTube stream, yes, we we do it. We Marge has a wonderful accent. She's got a real Southern USA accent. Yeah, it really makes me feel more like you're actually talking to a person instead of just typing away in emails. I've been busy all week for some new jobs. You remember that I told you I'm a professional housekeeper, and I took on two new houses that I began this week. It's a dirty job, but someone has to do it. Been a bit of excitement in news about Boston, but I'm happy they caught the people who did it. Now we're just we waiting to see why. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's just awful, isn't it? Those those poor people in Boston, they they were only running, weren't they? They were only running. Now, of course, um, they're saying that the the person they've they've got the person. Of course, he he nearly killed himself, but he didn't succeed. I think I put. Am I right in thinking he put a gun in his mouth and shot it, but he didn't kill him? Anyway, they're now saying that they don't think he will ever be able to speak. Why would you do something like that to, to innocent people who were just going out jogging? Marge says, with so many bad things the media put out there and overlooking, there is good news in the world. I normally just turn off the news. Unless there's anything I can do about it, which I can't, it's just overboard in stressing out over it. I have noticed nowadays that people are getting to the point of addictions to depressing and horrible news. Much of the movies are bloodier and more gore. Yes, I've noticed this. How many times have you seen thousands of people get all excited about something good happening and go on and on about it? It doesn't go long, but it gets a tragedy and it goes ballistic. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Although I do like to talk about nice things like Barry Manilow. How could you ever, ever, girls, how could you ever not talk about Barry Manilow for more than a few hours? It's just not possible. It's not possible. And somewhere down it, what's that song? Somewhere down the road, our paths are gone across again. Oh, I love that song. Somewhere in the night, somewhere in the night, somewhere in the night. I must sing again. I haven't sung for you for a long time, have I? Today, uh, that's April the 20th when she sent this, has been a beautiful day after all the storms finally passed the other day. It's still the start of the tornado season, but a good thing to have a trial run for safety practices like getting ready for the storms. Do be careful with those nasty old tornadoes. Do be careful, March. <clears throat> I went to garage sales today and found some bargains on some T-shirts. I remember I remember the first time I went to Florida, actually, there was a, a T-shirt place called T-Shirt King, and you could get T-shirts for a dollar apiece. Have you still got those places? T-Shirt King, it was called. And this, this place, it was massive, this place. All different T-shirts, a dollar each. The only thing was, they weren't particularly good quality, so you, know, so you wore them a few times. Once you washed them, that was it. They'd be all out of shape, so, you know. Um... I use a lot of T-shirts in my profession, so I get second-hand ones to wear, and if they are not wearable, I will cut them up for rags. I laughed, however, that the T-shirts I found had Christian sayings and logos all over them. But for only ten, dot, 10 cents a shirt, I could pass them up because they were nice T-shirts. 
since I'm not a Christian and then wearing a T-shirt saying Jesus got it done is sort of funny. <laughs> it doesn't bother me at all. I'm OK with Jesus, just not into organised religions about him. But I try my best to respect others uh, of their religions as long as they don't try and convert me. Maybe I can add to the sayings to fit to my own agenda. That would not be wise since three of my clients are hardcore right-wing Christians. If they only knew I had a Wiccan working for them. If they only knew they had a Wiccan working for them. Let's hope not. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, Marge. I mean, I'm... I'm very uh, open to, to all religions, absolutely. Uh, there are various... I'd like to visit, you know, places like mosques and synagogues and... And what 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 the Buddhists? What do they pray in? Is it like a uh, what what do they call where they go praying? I don't know, actually. You know, I I would like to visit all these places and observe what goes on there. I really would. But um, yes, uh, why shouldn't uh, you uh, accept someone else's religion? You just let them get on with it. It's, it's not hard, is it? You know, you don't have to make comment all the time. Like sometimes, if I've put on my Facebook that I've been to church, and someone will make some vile comment, you know, about all priests being paedophiles or something like, you know, damn well that all priests are not paedophiles. You'll get some probably. Like there are in all forms of life, you know. You're not telling me, you know, that it probably um, uh, everything has got such a person in it. It's like saying, you know, all, all people in, let me see, what is a particular place? I'm just trying to think now. Um, okay, Romanians, Romanian gypsies. All Romanian gypsies are bad and they steal from you. No, they don't. Some of them do. But not all of them. And when people go on my Facebook, and I might, I've been to church, and, and someone will put a vile comment on there. Uh, it does annoy me. Why comment? Well, don't comment. Don't put a comment on there. Just ignore it. If you don't like it, just ignore it. No, they have to put a comment on there. You know. And that does annoy me. I don't put a comment. You know, someone's been to mosque or something. I don't put a comment on that. Well, I mean, because it doesn't bother me, you know. I, it doesn't bother me. But other people who are totally against this, that or the other, and you put something on your status where you've been or whatever, and then they put some vile comment. And it's not, it's not necessary, is it? It's just not necessary. I'm very open to all religions and, and peoples of all over the place, and you must accept that that's how they are, and that's it. And everyone can actually get on together. You can have all these religions. You can. And everyone can get on together. But you have to make a bit of an effort. People have to make a bit of an effort, as, as indeed you do, Marge. I'm not really sure you know what a Wiccan is. Some Wiccans are actually witches. It's of the pagan path, but it is earth-based. I have my own way of practice. However, and not many Wiccans even practice the same. It's like Christian denominations, depends on the way you believe. Yes, there are lots of different Christian relation, uh, uh, domina uh, uh, denominations. I'm a Catholic, there's the Church of England, there's the Church of the Methodist Church, there's Baptist Church, all sorts, and, but they all believe in Christ, you see. I don't call myself a witch, yet that's because, uh, to me, that's an honour to get that title. The word witch is related to the word witty, wisdom or wise, and I'm not any of that. So, if you hear the word witchcraft, it means craft or practice of the wise, not evil and a devil. Yeah, uh, not evil and a devil worshipper, except some witches are Satanists. People are people, so some might use it for bad reasons. Witchcraft magic is neutral, and the user is the one who decides how to use it. Witchcraft is a practice. Wicca is a religion. Well, I, I think I need to speak to... I don't know if you can help me with this one, Marge. Could you practice some witchcraft, maybe, and get me a boyfriend? Is that possible? Someone who would be able to fit in with my lifestyle. And me with theirs, of course. Do you think you could do practice that, or perhaps send me... Oh, the customs would never allow that in, would they? Send me a little potion in the post to drop into someone's drink that I like or something like that. Eh? <laughs> Maybe you could do that. No, you couldn't send anything. Perhaps you could practice some witchcrafts, Marge, and send me a partner. Is that possible? Do you need to see a picture of him first? Do I need to send you a picture and then you can do some magic over it or something like that? 
Oh, I'm serious. Can you do that? Is that possible? Um, or maybe I'm misinformed. As Marge goes on here, I just wish there wasn't so much, not, not so much misinformation about Wiccans and Pagans. I don't worship a devil. Oh, I, oh, I know that. I know that. that there are good witches, like in The Wizard of Oz. There are good witches and there are bad witches. There are good people and there are bad people. I'm a bad person. I'm a very, very bad person. I am Marge. I love the spirit that is life within. All creatures and natures and us, the way... Oh, just a moment. Don't know that number. We'll ignore it. Thank you. Um, I love the spirit that is life within, all creatures and nature and us. My way is, and it harm none, including myself, which I do try my best to follow. On another subject, how much garden knowledge do you have? Only what I taught myself, really. As time's gone on, pottering about in the garden, doing that sort of thing. Own, only stuff I know myself. Uh, sort of taught as, 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 you know, as I've been out there doing it. What kind of flowers or herbs have you grown? And any advice for me growing sage? Because I have failed miserably. All I know, Mud, is that not everyone can grow everything. You're good at certain things. And not every garden can support everything. You know, you will have a certain type of soil in your garden. And you might try and grow, say, for example, roses, and they just won't grow because you've got the wrong type of soil. Now, it's better, it's better to find a plant that is suitable for your type of soil rather than change the soil so that you can grow a rose. Do you see what I mean? You're better off finding it. And I think you can take a sample of soil in. You can do it here in the UK. You can take a sample of soil in to a garden centre, take it in there, and probably for a small fee, take, right, that's my soil. What can I grow in this? And, that, and they will be able to tell you. Do you have a greenhouse? No. I have, um, like, a cold frame. It's not a greenhouse at all. It's just a plastic thing. It was very cheap. It's very small, so it's just a plastic thing. I know certain plants are toxic. Do cats... Uh, to cats, do you watch out for these in your house and garden? Yes, I do. I, I, I try and make sure that I haven't got anything in there that's toxic to the cat. Because she does like going and she has a munch away on the grass. They like to eat grass cats because it helps them with their fur balls and all that. Oh, enough of my ramblings. I wish you and Katie a nice day. And that's from a uh, lovely Marge. Thank you very much for that, Marge. All right, time for me to go, boys and girls. I've got a, another email here from lovely Wendy, <clears throat> which I'll probably read out Friday, if not next Wednesday. OK, thank you very much. Now, don't forget, do join us for our live show on Friday morning at 10.30. That's at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Chris Reardon UK forward slash feed. And that is uh, uh, live on Friday mornings at 10.30 and then goes up as a recording on Saturday. That's it then. Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. That's the email address. Facebook, if you want to join me on there, facebook.com forward slash chris Reardon UK. I'll see you on the next show. Bye-bye.